Well, welcome to the AAF Lunch and Learn. Um, I'm Tim Bate. I'm going to be hosting today. And uh, we've got some exciting speakers, uh, Josh Sullivan from Fried Design and, and uh, Meg Wagler, both illustrators and um, great designers. <clears throat> and we'll get to their introductions in just a second. Um, this is a, um, a Lunch and Learn that the AAF puts on uh, monthly. It was formed during COVID so that we could uh, see one another and, and share ideas and, and uh, be creative together and meet new people. Um, and it still serves as a pretty good way to engage along the way. So we've, we've continued it. Um, Chris and I have been doing some hosting uh, of, of panels. And if you have ideas for um, something that you'd like to see, then send us a note or put it in the chat. So again, I'm Tim Bade. Uh, our topic today is the new role of illustration and design in business. We're going to be focused more on uh, illustration. And um, you're going to hear from uh, Josh Sullivan and Meg Wegler again. Um, you can use the Zoom chat if you have a question or a comment along the way, and we'll try to pick those out and, and uh, blend those into the conversation as we go. So quick introductions. Um, Josh Sullivan, award-winning brand designer and illustrator currently living in Springfield, a graduate of Full Sail University in Orlando, worked in-house uh, different agencies, including five years at the Alchemedia Project, where Josh and I first met. Uh, 2018, Josh opened his own studio under Fried Design, and in 2020, opened Supper. Also in that year, he opened Sweet Boys, um, which you'll have to tell us more about Sweet Boys too, uh, Josh. Uh, passionate Springfieldian, intensely proud family man, armchair bourbon enthusiast. Uh, believes in working with brave clients and creating work that inspires. Welcome, Josh Sullivan. Thank you. Um, Meg Wagler is our other guest. Uh, Meg's visual artist, illustrator, and muralist known internationally for her colorful art and hand lettering. Um, her work is recognized for its vibrant palettes, striking compositions, and messages of self-love. Alongside her independent art career, Meg is working to build Mid by Midwest, which um, we were disappointed to see that that was, you know, called off. But hey, it's the right thing to do right now. So we look forward to that next year, Meg. And thank you for spearheading that. Um, Mid by Midwest is a, a, a new um, art and culture initiative in Springfield focused on connecting the dots between art, music, placemaking, and economy. Um, Meg received her BFA from Missouri State in 2011. Her career started in graphic design and art direction. She made the shift in 2019 from working in an agency to using illustration and social impact to build, to begin building her own brand presence. So welcome, Meg Wagler. Thank you. Applause, applause. Hmm. Awesome to have you both. Um, like I said before, I'm super excited about this. Um, illustration is a passion of mine, um, although I don't do as, as much as I'd love to. Um, so anyway, we, we're excited to hear from both of you. So um, we'll get started, and, and this will give you a chance to talk and, and, uh, and, and the team a, a chance to ask questions. So we're going to get, uh, we've got a few questions here that um, panel uh, discussion points that uh, Josh and, and Meg have, have seen. So we'll start with you, Meg. From your point of view, how does illustration design, uh, but primarily illustration, let's keep it focused there, how does illustration support business today and why is it essential? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think that that's a, you know, a deep, re it can get pretty deep, I guess, if, if we dive in um, pretty far, but I think at the surface level, you know, right now we're uh, passing the age of information. And I think we're in the age or entering the age of authenticity is, is how I explain it to my clients. And I think what that means is brands are, uh, no longer, you know, able to escape by and with sort of generic, um, you know, voices that, that float with the crowd. I think now our consumers are, expecting uh, authenticity and brand voice and in uh, brand visuals, you know, those two things marry. And so I think, you know, what illustration provides is a less 
technical way to provide a personality to your brand, whether that's your personal brand or your, you know, your business brand. Um, it, it sort of pairs with your, your copywriting and your messaging, which, you know, is a, is a, a cousin to, to the brand. And so, you know, I think it provides this, this avenue of personality to build a relationship with your client. So I think it's pivotal to, to utilize in some way, you know, I think some brands, it makes more sense than others, but it, it really has become, you know, a, a really helpful tool to, to be able to express kind of your messaging through visuals more so than, than in the past. Josh, can we hear from you? I think Meg nailed it much more articulate, <laughs> articulately than I would. Uh, uh, I, at the end of the day, you know, um, the way that we kind of look at it is, I would say the vast majority of clients that come through Fried generally are looking for, um, for heavy illustration work. Um, and I think that that says something about what we do stylistically and all that. But um, at the end of the day, it, um, it allows us to kind of uh, create something out of nothing, right? And be able to tell a story in a little bit more of a unique way. Um, and so, uh, you know, the other side of that too is it's just cool. I mean, whenever you're able to, to, to literally create whatever you want, um, you know, whenever you use heavy photography or whatever else, um, that takes a lot of work and is expensive and, um, you know, it takes a whole crew of people to pull off some kind of big, crazy concept, whereas illustration, um, we can more kind of, uh, I guess, interestingly tell a story in a variety of different formats or styles or whatever. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know that it has some kind of big, like, huge groundbreaking impact to business. I think it's just a different way to express creativity and, and express the story in a different way. Good. Thanks, Josh. Um, <clears throat> well, the next question is um, for you to start with, uh, Josh, how did your career lead you into this niche area? Um, and if you could explain your personal journey and how you got to where you are now. Uh, yeah, so um, I spent uh, several years in the ad industry. I've never done anything else uh, other than like <laughs> bartend and wait tables. Uh, so um, my whole career has been around um, art and design and illustration and advertising and branding. Um, there came a point after I left the ad agency um, world where I went to go work for Mother's Brewing Company um, and as like their marketing director. Um, and that went really well and I learned a lot about that business. But what I really uh, found out was that um, there was a, um, a time and place for me to, at that point in my career, go and um, do the work that I was passionate about. Um, I think a lot of people who are my age um, haven't really figured out who they are or kind of like found themselves or uh, felt okay to live into their own skin until maybe they hit like their, you know, mid to late 20s, at least I know I didn't. Um, and so all of a sudden, whenever I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do what I'm interested in and be myself and not try and fit into a box that I think um, the company I work for or whoever else wants me to fit into, I'm just going to be true to my unique self that started coming through in the work. And that started, um, you know, leading me to clients who were into the same things that I am. Um, so we started, uh, I started um, pride in kind of an effort to do design and illustration for um, stuff that I was interested in. Right. And that kind of just took me straight into a niche. Um, I've always been super into, um, you know, music and counterculture and, and things like that. And, and I let all of those things that I've been into kind of fall to the wayside in an effort to be kind of more or less somebody who I wasn't. Um, and so once I started opening myself up to that a little bit more and, and letting myself grow, it kind of just came naturally in that way. So um, Fried was kind of born out of that um, want 
and need and um and now it's just kind of become its own its own monster well it's it and it is a it's a great monster and you've done a, a great job creating it we're um it's fun to watch all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do so uh, meg can you talk about your um your career and and your pathway and explain how your uh how you, how your personal journey evolved? Yeah, uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's unique. It's kind of cliche, right? So I spent I also spent uh, the first uh, uh, almost ten years of my career as as a graphic designer, or art director, and kind of working my way up um, that ladder and bounced around a little bit from in house to agency setting. And um, you know, my degree is in graphic design and illustration. I had a dual a dual degree there and um you know I had kids really young so that sort of moral obligation to make sure I was monetizing uh responsibly um and, and providing for my family I think kind of uh led into the reason why I didn't jump sooner from that ship you know I think um so I really leaned into that graphic design aspect and um uh lived in that world for for quite a while and I think as the as the story goes, I you know I was working with uh, clients that did not resonate with with my um, values necessarily or um, just my purpose or you know like Josh mentioned just kind of finding that purpose and and my why and and how I felt uh, obligated or or you know compelled to kind of contribute my my talents to the world or, or what I bring to the table. So I think over time, uh, you know, I searched, you know, they always say find a hobby. Uh, so my husband and I, we, we bought a letterpress and we started working a little bit more with our hands. And um, I started to paint a little bit more and, and got that you know, scratch that itch to, to create a little bit more with my hands and the hobby started to uh, sort of take over. Um, I started taking my vacation days to paint and, uh, you know, uh, booking and double booking through my lunch hours and things like that. So I think ultimately I had to kind of make a leap of faith and um, go out on my own. And I think, you know, uh, it, it's like a look back kind of uh, a leap, I think. And, you know, with I think with with agency settings or in-house settings, you're sort of uh, carved out this path. And I think what was important to me was to seek out clients that um, I felt connected to. And you know, I mentioned that that sort of age of authenticity and, and aligning with brands and missions that um, I felt good to create for, and and it felt natural to create for instead of trying to squeeze my style onto um, you know someone that it didn't necessarily fit. So. I think um, once I once I started to carve my own groove, um, it just felt really natural and it took off from there. So I think um, building my own brand and, and kind of seeking out clients that made sense for me was was very easy once I finally uh, took a deep breath and kind of cut loose. Yeah, that's great. That's just so great. Now um, you mentioned letterpress, Josh. Didn't you have a letterpress? At one time, or no, silk screen. You were a silk screen. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, no, I had a, a me and my wife Julie, uh, who's over here. <laughs> she, uh, hey, Julie. We, <laughs> hey. we owned a uh, we owned a screen printing company called yeah. The Basement for a while. Yeah. Um, we sold it back in like two thousand sixteen, something like that. Yeah. I sold the business and um, they moved it to Kansas City. I'm pretty sure it's defunct now, but uh, <laughs> but um, no, we did that for a little while as well. And that's actually, um, it, that's kind of been a, a passion of mine for a long, long time. And, um, we're actually in the process now of, um, of converting a big half of our office here at the FTC offices to print shops. So that's all turning into a, a a screen print and letterpress shop for uh, not for clients, but just for us to make all of our own weird stuff that we like to make. So, gotcha. We won't, uh, don't we're not we're not printing anybody's uh kids' baseball jerseys. What? But, uh, 
<laughs> so Meg, do you still have the letterpress then or no? Yeah, we do. We have a little tabletop and then we have a flatbed. Uh, um, it's just it's just interesting that you both came from the more tactile um, areas or you had something that you had to do with your hands that way, you know, then that mm -hmm. led to your illustration style. So cool, Meg. Um, so in defining your style, I know you talked a lot about defining your style um, and trusting your gut and, and all that, but how do you how do you get there? How do you define it? How do you trust that that direction is successful that you won't go um, broke in trying to um, you know and in finding people that will enjoy it with you? Uh, that's that's the that's the rub, right? Um, it's you know it's not an easy process, and I think it's it's sort of this rumble that you have to um, roll through. And ultimately it is a leap of faith. You know, I think that there is a, um, a faith in, in yourself that is, I don't think you can put faith in other businesses or other people because you can't control the way that the universe works. But I think if you, um, you know, everybody's going to have a different answer to what, how to get from A to B, you know? Um, but I think for me, it was forcing myself to be very vulnerable and open in a public setting. You know, that's not, that is very against my character. I'm typically very uh, buttoned up, I think, in, in, in front of a crowd, but um, I, I forced myself to just put out crappy work uh, and because I, you know, otherwise I would, I would sit and stare at it and never put it out. And, um, so I think for me, what I did is I set a deadline and, uh, one hour every day, I would just crank out these really crappy illustrations and I would post them online and on, on Instagram. And, um, it kind of took this edge off of needing to feel perfect or needing to feel like my style was, was formed or, um, you know, like I already had it figured out coming out of the gate and it, um, really created this, this sort of storyline for my brand. Um, and it was finding my voice. And so the crowd that, um, did that along with me, I think, uh, you know, that, that story of, of kind of starting fresh and starting new became my brand, um, and, and, and how I aligned with, uh, you know, wanting to seek out, for example, things important to me that, that my brand ultimately aligns with, uh, a, a lot of, um, sort of feminine empowerment, um, you know, different avenues of activism around, uh, social equity around, uh, climate change and, and, and protection and, and things that matter to me. And I think, um, I, I just with my art director background, I just started, uh, I could just kind of hit the ground running and, uh, there's a, oh gosh, what was it called? Um, a goal to get to 100 rejections. I don't know if anybody recalls this, but it was a few years ago floating around. And, and so I, I, I brought that practice into, uh, into my business. And my, my goal is, you know, if you set this goal of being rejected, you sort of shave off the, the, sting that comes along with it. And I think uh, just putting yourself out there ultimately is the, the first step. And then you um, just have to trust uh, that if you're doing the work and you're being authentic, um, that it, it sort of your groove is formed uh, naturally. I think you just have to, you just have to let go. Let go and trust it. <clears throat> Josh, do you want to elaborate on that too? Just um, trusting your how your your uh, direction or your style will be accepted and and going with it. I know you talked a little bit about that, but no, I mean uh, once again, uh, she nailed it. Um, so I think at the end of the day, you just do the work that you like, right? And hopefully, other people get on board with it, or they don't. Um, you can't be everything to everybody, and people despise my work and our work like people hate it <laughs> and some people love it and that's okay and uh and it's not for everybody and that's perfectly fine um you know we get accused a lot of uh not drawing anything but skeletons and snakes and you know whatever we want and uh but that's because that's what we're into so that's fine um you know um 
I don't necessarily think that's true, but uh, it is what it is. And so I think ultimately, um, you know, you, your style and your output is a reflective of your interests and who you are and what you're into and a accumulation of all the cultures that you mix together in your, uh, in your mm-hmm. art find, and that's what ends up coming out at the end of the, at the end of the pen. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think as a career ad guy, I mean, uh, you wear a lot of hats for a lot of different brands and you have to make work that feels like a brand and you've both carved niches for your own brand and your own styles. And now, you know, people are buying that brand, which is really cool, you know. Um, so I hope that, uh, Megan, I know you said you, you had a little bit of work to share. Could you share some work with us that you're proud of and kind of hopefully that'll help reflect your journey and, and, um, let us know the kinds of things that you do that you're most proud of. Um, if, yeah. if the screen will allow you to share, Josh, can you share, if you can share, then Megan can read you. Read yeah, no, uh, I think so. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you a couple minutes, Meg. Okay. Uh, what do you guys see right now? Pride. Uh, Does it say the Chamonix Creek Brewing Co.? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is kind of unseen, I guess. So um, this is from a presentation uh, that we just sent to client today. Um, this would be round uh, like five, I think, of um, some beer labels that we're working for out of a uh, for a rebrand for a company, um, a, a brewery out of uh, Philadelphia. Um, so I thought that this might be cool. Um, this is their entire core lineup. So, um, uh you know, their, their main beers. We also redid their entire logo system and all that kind of stuff. So I thought this might be a little bit fun. Um, nobody's seen any of this work yet. So I guess if you are on here, you would be the first people to see it other than the client. Um, no screenshots, right? <laughs> so you can see here, like, um, the whole idea behind this, the, the brewery is called Neshamany Creek. I'm assuming that you guys can see the beer label, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so, uh, we went through multiple variations. I thought that this one would be cool to show because, um, all of their, uh, beer labels are like super illustration heavy. Um, so there's spot illustrations, there's main, main illustrations across the board here. Um, none of their beers changed, uh, like the names or anything. So we had to really develop a story that was based around every single beer that they had. Um, so this one was County Line. This is all based around, like, they are historically a very music-focused brewery. Um, they have a lot of shows and things like that. Almost everybody that's in the brewery who works there, um, you know, was in a band or played music at some point. This is a pretty large brewery. I mean, they're all across the state of Pennsylvania, into New Jersey, New York, um, uh, all over the place. For reference, they're about, they're, they're a little bit bigger than, like, Mother's for instance, right? If, if everybody's from Springfield and, and recognizes Mother's Brewing Company, who just did a, a rebrand. So, um, and so kind of just taking through some of the work here, you guys can kind of see how it starts to come together. Um, pretty fun stuff. Uh, you know, really telling kind of an interesting story across all the different beer labels with these different spot illustrations. This one, for instance, is uh, is, you know, all based around like hardcore Philadelphia, you know, themes. So the Liberty Bell, you've got, uh, Ben Franklin over there cracking a beer. Uh, we did not know what John meant whenever they told us it for them, it actually stands for like juicy L with nugget. Uh, but John is a word that people in Philadelphia apparently use that means like everything. It literally means anything you want it to mean. Um, so uh, you could say like, uh, you know, let's get this John started for like, let's get this party started or I'm going to crack this John. Like they use it interchangeably for whatever it's, I've never heard it before anyway. So that's that. Um, 
And, uh, and so we had a lot of fun with these. You guys can kind of see how exactly how many we did here. Um, there's a ton. Um, we also did some of their um, like single release. So this is one of their more um, one of their more popular beers called The Shape of Pops to Come. This is based off of uh, the Refuse album cover, which is a punk album from like the early 2000s um, that like they kind of like was a mandate. Like we need to figure out how to use the themes of this album cover with this beer label. Um, so we did that and, and you can look up that beer label or that album cover and kind of see how it relates here. Um, and then we also did a heritage version of another one of their beers called Warehouse Lager. You can kind of see how that comes to life, uh, what the full core lineup looks like. And you can see like there's these spot illustrations all the way across. So no skulls or snakes or whatever here, but what? still all pretty cool. Nice. Um, if we're going to talk skulls and snakes and stuff, this is a bunch of work that we um, actually just sent to print uh, for our new uh, fall merch line. So all of this will be hitting like all our online stores. We do uh, a, a big, huge portion of our business um, is our own stuff. So we sell a, a boatload of merch. Um, like company merch, fried design company themed stuff uh, for um, mainly to like the designer crowd, right? Mm -hmm. Like other graphic designers. Um, and so just some stuff that we've done here um, of like fun illustrations, type lockups, things like that, that we send out um, just to kind of have fun and make cool stuff. Um, a big part of all the stuff for fried is also all the copywriting. So lots of fun little like taglines, um, Midwestern Hellraisers, almost a cult certified, you know, bullshit. <laughs> it's a fun way to kind of spin things for us. Um, and then let's see, you guys should have fried website, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, we do a lot of um, work specifically in the, I'm just going to keep going until Meg gets here, I guess, until she gets back. So somebody just stop me whenever she gets, because I can't see. Um, so we historically have done a lot of work. We say that we specialize in vice, right? So we do a lot of work in um, cannabis, uh, hospitality, alcohol, and lifestyle. Um, lifestyle is kind of our catch-all for, um, for really anything else, but a lot of stuff in um, kind of you know, extreme sports, um, skateboarding, um, weird stuff like that. So kind of wherever we can fit and people want to have a little bit more of a, um, I guess more of an aggressive brand brought to life. Um, so the one, the two, I guess that I thought I would show real quick, um, one is easy mountain. So this is a fried and supper shared client. Um, so my other agency, Supper, um, that's the full service ad agency, hired Pride to come through and do the design work for it. Um, this brand just won um, Canvas brand of the year. So something that we're real proud of um, here. Uh, we don't get that award. Easy Mountain gets the award, but that is good enough for us. So um, this is a really, really, really heavy illustration brand. Um, this goes all the way back to um, this uh, dispensary in Republic, but they have long history and kind of um, the kind of Ozarks booze running stuff. They also own some car dealerships now. So there's a lot of like things to pull across there um, from a, a theme standpoint. And finally, they the big thing with them is this kind of idea of Midwestern mystic like mysticism. So so much of what we've developed for them was this kind of like mystical themed brand um, where we pull in animals and these sayings and things like that to kind of create this, um, this weird uh, kind of classical Ozarkian theme across everything. Um, you can kind of see how it comes to life on murals, um, packaging, um, even into their website uh, and stuff like that. Um, so again, really, really, really heavy illustration. Um, That's awesome. Fun and stuff. Then, 
Uh, the other one was uh, Sweet Boys because you asked. Uh, Sweet Boys is a bar that we own here in town. Um, that's also another super heavy illustration. Um, this is at 310 South where Scotch and Soda used to be, if anybody's familiar with that place, um, which we also did all the brand work for. Um, but again, just super heavy duty illustration work here of really kind of bringing something that is uh, completely unexpected to come out of Springfield. Um, this place can be very jarring for people. <laughs> uh, we like it that way. Um, it is, uh, you know, within the cultural context of Springfield is something that um, nobody has been kind of, um, I like to think brave enough to try and pull off yet. Um, and, uh, and we're really happy with it. And, uh, it's been a lot of fun. So again, lots of fun with illustration, copywriting, went down South and sold my soul as sweet boys, um, stuff like that, just to have a lot of fun with. Um, and of course that comes together, you know, all through the, all through the brand. Um, but you can definitely see like how pride gets its spin off, um, from an illustration standpoint across all of these brands where everything's got, um, you know, big, bold style, a lot of personality kind of, you know, spread across everything. And, um, yeah. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for sharing. That's great. Great stuff. And Meg is back. So we'll switch the screen, Meg, and uh, maybe you can share a little bit too. Um, I just put together a short little collection of work in, in categories so that we can talk a little bit about um, just how, how different you can take, how, how different you can use illustration uh, to, to kind of, you know, display your voice, I guess. So you guys should be able to see um, this presentation. Yeah, it says Meg Waggler. Yep. Yeah, we can see it. illustration. Is that true? Yep. Okay. So, so the first kind of grouping is, is my brand, my personal brand and how, how I go to market as an individual visual artist and illustrator. So um, the, you know, my business is really um, a couple of different verticals and I like it that way because it keeps it fresh. Um, I, I can utilize illustration. I can utilize my uh, painting murals. I can do graphic design. Um, so it's however I want to break up my time and, and uh, keep it interesting. So what I, what I make sure to do is, is just make sure that the client understands what my vibe is. Uh, and then if it, typically at this point, they come to me because they like how bright and colorful and sort of lighthearted a lot of my work is. Um, and so I don't have to do a lot of convincing once they get here. Um, but if I'm seeking out work, um, it, you know, I, I, I just try to be smart about uh, finding the right types of people that will be open to it or that it won't be a far stretch from what they're already doing um, with messaging. But a lot of my work, um, you know, sort of has this push and push and pull uh, tango with lightness and darkness using a lot of uh, blacks to anchor and kind of this messaging um, using really bright colors for dark subjects. Um, I've had Really good luck, frankly, um, just getting into a couple of markets over in Europe that I think um, helped propel uh, some of the editorial illustration avenue of my career, uh, talking a lot about um, climate, climate change crises um, over there and just getting weird. They like my weird stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it made it easier to, to dip into that market. And then once you're cool in Europe, people in the States think you're cool too. So it's just, um, a nice, it, it was a nice segue to legitimize, I guess, some of what I was doing back here, but, um, oh, the, the big start of my illustration, um, sort of success was, was leaning into, something very important to me um, in women's equity. Um, I got started with uh, Nadia Akamoto, uh, who runs Period, and she is um, kind of leading the charge to identify, you know, um, 
period inequities um, with, with low income women and, and girls. And so um, that led to a few other projects over in London with a similar, um, similar goals, just to make feminine products more accessible to low income um, families and, and individuals. And from there that led to, um, you know, work with uh, a women's health organization called Ovi up in New York um, that let me do some, some fun stuff where you, uh, you know, we start to de demystify women's bodies. And that was really important to me and, and sort of embracing a little bit of, um, you know, that messaging and, and making it mainstream. And then from there kind of taking it into, um, you know, how, how can that translate into positivity, right? So I'm not only doing really heavy content and how can those two things uh, entwine? And so a lot of my, my work uh, bounces all over the place and I like it that way. Um, but just, I think my use of color and, and uh, sort of heavy handedness uh, in, in color balance is what unifies everything. So, um, you know, the last year or two has been really focused on um, how to incorporate sort of that residual income, I think, for my business. So looking at art licensing versus these sort of per project based things. So that helps balance that out. So I think, you know, there's some some business acumen that's helpful to have there um, from the agency setting background. But ultimately, you know, this voice and this brand for me is very bright and very um, positive, even when we're talking about difficult subjects. So um, I think that that has been pretty well established and, and, and gone over well in, in finding clients. And I think it works well uh, with my mural work um, where I think, you know, I've had a few commission pieces that are of course more brand centric, but ultimately when, when people kind of let me loose, they just, they let, let me, let me do my illustration thing on a, in a larger scale. So I think, you know, they expect to see something bright and weird and, and quirky and mostly colorful, but a little weird, mm -hmm. you know, so I think I've, I've created this sort of niche of, um, you know, whatever feel, whatever feels right for that particular project. So, you know, that's been, really great to be able to um, continue sort of finding these um, these nuggets of, of just helping people find their voice and their um, making their space or, or their product feel really special as well. And um, that part's been great. But I think it's what I wanted to show is how different um, my personal brand is from dipping into mid by Midwest. So in you know, Tim, you mentioned this has been a big uh, project of mine, sort of what has become my life's work, I feel like, over the last few years. And, um, you know, if, if you're unfamiliar with Midbit Midwest, it's a nonprofit organization that started, you know, with some, with some longer reaching goals uh, of establishing a public art residency program here in the area. Um, but the first goal really is to um, start and host our area's first mural festival, mural and culture festival, uh, where we were really uh, baking in all aspects centered around street art, sort of that traditional street art aspect, um, which is very different from my mural style. And so knowing that, you know, understanding that I only bring one flavor to that table and, and kind of putting back on my art director hat and, and kind of understanding who that audience would be that would want to see that come here um, and support that. Um, it required me to sort of peel back a few layers and um, do a little bit more research. And I, you know, partnered up with some sister organizations and that have already been doing this for years in Atlanta, up in Chicago, um, over in Denver and, in San Diego and a few places. And uh, it was a really fun project to brand. I, you know, I think that part of it was very easy and, and fun, um, but it's very, still very saturated, still very colorful, uh, but a little bit more um, edgy and, and a little uh, heavier as far as visual impact. So, you know, this, we, 
partnered up with Walk and Stash and just kind of gave them the reins to get weird um, mm -hmm. and and do, um, you know, give it a little bit of, we said acid light uh, is, is how we described it. So let them get a little funky. And I think that that really helped propel sort of, you know, the the public perception of, of what the brand of this is and, and will be as it builds. Um, really dipping into some illustrative work um, over here with, you know, some of our, our product, but using typography, of course, and, and, and really pretty simple iconography. Um, but like Josh mentioned with Sweet Boys, there, there's not a heavy handedness here in the area uh, with this type of brand. So, you know, our, our region, frankly, but especially Springfield is not quite used to um, toe dipping in, in this um, in this area. So it's kind of like a jump all in, you know, it was yeah. a, we have to come out of the gate really strong. And to do that, um, it was a little bit of cart before the horse where we really developed our brand first and then went after the market um, or vice versa. So, you know, we gained all of our artist, uh, th this here is our artist lineup. So you can see where we were really seeking out um, more of that street art, urban art vibe and who we were bringing here to Springfield to paint. Um, some of them were local artists. Um, we had people coming from Denver, Florida, uh, Hawaii, Nashville, um, Chicago, and then of course here in the area, I think we had somebody coming from LA as well, but we, you know, our team curated this uh, group of people partially because of the variety of styles uh, in sort of introducing Springfield um, to a more urban-esque uh, approach to this, but I think what we did was use these artists' vibes to help propel our brand as well. Um, and in doing that, we were able to um, secure funding and sponsorships and ticket sales and merch sales and everything from scratch. You know, we didn't have, um, we used a Kickstarter to to seed fund this and um, everything really was baked from, from a seed. <laughs> um, and I think that we did that truly through, through illustration and design. I, I think that it would not have been as successful as it has been, even though we've had to postpone again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were able to do this because of how strong our design presence and illustration presence was, our, our brand voice, um, the quality of video, the the immersiveness of our aesthetics, I think that that's really what has driven people's excitement and, and trust in what we're doing to, to do something different. So, um, you know, I think it, it matters. It always matters. And I think that it's important to kind of show these two different, you know, <laughs> these two yeah. different vibes it's are different. all coming from the same you know, yep. the same core um, and just understanding your audience is is really key and and how you bring that to life. Thank you, Meg. I mean, this yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, I, I appreciate the backstory too on on how you got to the brand and the second, um, how you got to your own brand and then also how you got to um, a brand that's kind of for everyone, um, but it also kind of stretches the boundaries. And I know Josh, your work stretches the boundaries too um, in different ways. So great for you guys to share. Thank you so much. Are there questions? I mean, we're going to kind of open it up now. We're running probably just a little bit over, um, but if you can hang with us, if there's any questions that you'd like to ask Meg or Josh, um, put them in the chat or raise your hand uh, through, the, through the Zoom system here or just shout it out. I know we're all dying to ask this, Josh. Uh, you do so much in the cannabis industry. Do you, have, do, do you and your crew have to get all baked for you to really get into those brands or, or are you able to do that without, and you don't have to answer. I, I just know that's on everybody's mind here. So we don't have to, but there's certainly no reason <laughs> not to. Okay. Yeah. It's legal now, man. Don't have to be such a square about it anymore. Uh, as a matter of fact, we do have one of our, uh, one of our new dispensaries is opening, um, tomorrow. So if you get a chance, go over to, uh, if you have your legal medical card, Go, go to the farmer's wife on Chestnut Expressway. 
Great. Okay. So looking for questions, anybody else? I will say, I think um, Josh mentioned this earlier, and I, I wonder if this is more applicable to, to this crowd, but I do think it's important to note how versatile illustration can be uh, for your budget for businesses. Um, I know that we touch on that lightly, but instead of, you know, I've, I've been on both ends of the spectrum with photography and illustration and, and design work and um, a photo shoot is very expensive every time because you have, you know, um, and, I, and I think that there's absolutely a place for that and a need for that, but um, illustration and hiring a team or an, ind an individual, depending on whatever the needs are, um, can be a really great way to kind of get a different flavor for your, for a brand on a much different budget. I think you're right, Megan. Also, the idea that there's so much stock going uh, on and, and um, it's so overused. Um, illustration always helps it be proprietary to the brand and, and um, you don't see yourself coming and going in other brands when you uh, do something original. So yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Colin. I joined late, so sorry if you guys already talked about this, but I was wondering, just do companies and, and clients approach you guys because of your like illustration heavy style or does it take some convincing sometimes? For me, it's uh, an even split, but I think it's an even split because I'm so uh, just, I don't think I, I'm just very assertive about going after clients and I'm okay with getting rejected. So um, I go after a ton of people that tell me no and, and that's okay. But um, I think I have equal amount of people that, that come to me because my style is, is already pretty well established. Yeah, we, uh, we get, I, I would say it's about half and half. We never like force it on folks. We just use it if it's a good like if it's a good fit, um, we get hired to do, you know, uh, we show the work we want to get, but we get hired to, so like we show a lot of heavy illustration work because we like doing that probably the most, um, but we get hired to do like super geometric logos and like stuff all the time. So we don't force it on folks. Um, typically, if somebody wants that, like they already know that they want to work with us. Generally speaking, people aren't coming to us for like our illustration style because we can do about any illustration style. Like that's not it. We can do whatever you want. A big part of it is they just want to work with somebody who they think is cool. And and um, we've been able to to, to <laughs> fake them out and <laughs> get them to think that they're cool, you know. Um, and so you know, there's there's that. There's also, I mean, we work with a lot of like client to client. We also do. I mean, we, we do work with folks that are, um, that are agency people, much like I'm, I'm assuming many of you are. So we get hired to do concept illustrations or storyboards or spot illustrations for products that, you know, whatever. So, you know, um, if you're trying to get across an idea to a client, sometimes you might need, uh, you know, somebody to draw it for you. That's fine. We can do that. So um we're we're a little all over the place with that well we're gonna um we're gonna end this so that everybody has a chance to grab a sandwich or whatever on their lunch hour we went a little bit over but this was great i think it was um refreshing to see uh new work from both of of you so thank you again for sharing and um and uh, we'll say uh, goodbye if you do have a, a thought or um a, a question or anything that you want to send in um you know, keep, keep sending it in this chat will be open for a little bit longer. And then if you have an idea for uh, a lunch and learn something that you'd be interested in seeing, then also post that and, and uh, we'll, we'll consider that. So thank you all very, very much for joining. There'll be another one next month. You'll see some emails. Um, so uh, we hope you can join next month too. So Josh, Meg, sincerely, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.